Hello here everyone and welcome to another gate crash draft. Um, gate crash is uh, a little bit becoming irrelevant with the uh, Grand Prix behind of us and all the PTQs in, uh, in the format over. But um, it still is a lot of fun to draft. I, I find that I haven't really got to the depth of the format um, and I'm willing to do a, a little more limited investigation into it. So here we go with another draft. This is the first pack to be opened. and. Um, it's it's not really impressive. There are, are a few good cards. We have uh, things like the Death Cult Rogue, and uh, I'm still a personal fan of Amber Beast, although I know a lot of players don't like it because it's um, a bit tricky to play with. Uh, there is the rare Sylvan Primordial, which is just a big bummer, so I'm not focusing on that. I think I want the Rogue here uh, and try if I can get uh, the Simic deck with Hands of Binding that I love so much. Uh, I think it's just the best card in the booster. There's uh, yeah, there's the, the other cards. There are a lot of cards that are fine, but none that really stand out. So I'm, I'm taking this one. Um, as you may have noticed, uh, the beta version of Magic Online is shuffling the boosters, so they're not sorted by by rarity anymore. Um, not really a big problem, but uh, the rare and the uncommons in the pack are just being shifted around. As you can see, the youngs are here, the rare is missing, so I did pick that one. Um, the best card in this booster would probably be the Mucking. It's a solid removal, but it's rather incompatible with either the blue or the black that we're trying to get the Death Cult Rogue. Um, possible contenders here are the, the Mind Eye Drake, which is just really good in Simic deck because of its high toughness. Uh, Demir Charm is an option, uh, but I don't really like going into Demir. I don't mind having to go there, but I don't want to be put on that spot on my second pick already. I don't think Demir Charm is good enough to force me in that direction anyway. Um, so I would be tempted to take the Drake here. Uh, if I go Demer, it's a, it's a fine card. If I go Simic, it's a fine card. And none of the other cards are really appealing to um, to go with my Duff Code uh, right now. Um, <coughs> here we get an interesting booster. We have uh, what I think is the best move in the set, Grilty Spectacle. Uh, we also have one of the power enchantments in Gift of Orzava. And some other minor interesting cards. I'm always interested in Prophetic Prism. Um, there, there's a gate that will help us fix stuff. But those those aren't really comparable to uh, to the two prime suspects in this booster. Um, normally, I have a tendency to just go for removal instead of uh, instead of an aura or a creature because removal really is important. Uh, it gives you control of the game and places where very other cards couldn't. But the gift might be an exception because it's just so good. The lifeling is relevant. Flying is relevant. Plus one plus one is semi relevant. It's all in all a really good aura. And if there isn't an, an answer for it, then you're going to win the game on that creature. Um, that said, it's uh, it, it's a tough call. I think I'm going to go with Crazy Spectacle because that would work better whatever game plan I'm going with. Uh, whether it be the um, uh, the, the Dimmer plan or, or some other plan I end up in. I always will like the Spectacle while the gift might just fizzle out on me. Um, I've taken the black card with the blue card so it seems we're going to end up in Dimmer after all. Um, but maybe we'll drop the Drake and go for Orzhov instead. It's, uh, it's very doable. Um, now we get this booster. And here we, we kind of have to decide on which direction we want to take. We have the very fine Deluvian Primordial. Uh, it's a big flyer, it has a, a nice ability. Its only problem is that it's 7 mana, but that isn't that big of a problem. Um, if we want to go the Orzhov route, we have the very fine Troll Parasite. It's very cheap, it has Extort, which is really good. Uh, there is the Angelic Edict for removal spell. Um, and there are some other filler cards like the Battle Fit Spy and the Metropolis Sprite, which might be good, but we don't really want right now. I'm really impressed with how this Primordial is doing his things. So I'm going to pick this um, and probably end up in Deemer after all. So uh, we might even be considering going Esper. Um, I've, I've seen three gates already. Uh, I've, I've seen two prisms already. Uh, maybe some of them will come around and we can easily splash and Shalaki to do a, a bit of a slower Deemer deck. Um, then we have uh, Metropolis Sprite seems to be the only straightforward pick right here. Uh, it's a fine aggressive creature, it goes well with the, the blue early cypher spells like Hands of Binding. Uh, if I end up on Demir Super Aggro with Shadow Slices, then Metropolis Sprite is really good as well. If I go for the Esper deck, I would have to pick Prophetic Prism here. Or maybe even the Angelic Edict to get started. But so far, um, I don't have any reason to go Esper yet. I don't have to add that white, so I'm going to take Sprite and see if straight Demir works. If it doesn't, well, too bad. Uh, but if, if, if we, you know, there's a Knight of Obligation in here. That's a good pull for Esper. It gives a bit of a signaling that white is open. There's uh, a smite in here as well, and of course, three denizen. So, this was a heavy white pack, and no one has picked anything out of it, seemingly. Um, the alternative to the knights is Gutter Skulk. 
to stay on two colors, but Gatoscope is just underwhelming. It's just uh, it, it's okay, it's fine, it's, it's it's nothing wrong with it, but it's just not as good as any of these three cards. So I'm going to take the gamble here, see if we can force that Esper out, and I'm taking the Knight of Application. And here we get uh, two interesting cards, uh, Devour Flesh and Eat Rise. And it kind of depends on the direction your deck is taking, uh, which one of these cards is better. Um, Eater Rise is uh, a really good tempo hoser and Devour Flesh is a really good tempo controller. Uh, the difference is that uh, Devour Flesh will do something very specific very early on for you, while Eater Rise will do something very specific very late on for you. Um, seeing as how we are already stocking up on the late spells with the 7 mana flyers, the Drake, the Knight and the Spectacle, I think I want Devour Flesh here. Um, just because it is a full two turns earlier than the Eaterize. I think they're about as good. They're just very specific in what they do. They both are, and you just need to know what you want. Um, this booster has uh, Scorchwalker. It's the only card that I really consider playable. I never mind playing Shielded Passage or Shadow Slice, but I'm not really happy if I actually include those either. Um, seeing the direction this deck is headed, I don't think Shadow Slice is a good card. Uh, and I really do not want to play against Scorchwalker. It's a really fine addition to the aggressive decks and deals a lot of damage. So I think I'm better off here taking out Scorchwalker for an opponent than taking out the Shadow Slice that probably will not make our deck. Okay, so this is our first booster again. Uh, one of the gates came around, that's a good sign. And I'm just going to take it, all the other spells are underwhelming. And I really like fixing, especially if I stick on the three colors. I know there's, there's a Knight of Obligation and he's, he's the lone part of white right now. Um, but that's okay. I don't mind expanding on white and I don't even mind if I can afford it to splash for that single knight because he really is a good creature. I'll just take the, the ruffian here and another gate. And here we get two playables, uh, another sprite and a sage road denizen. Um, they both are fine. Uh, if I want to go and capitalize on things like that's approached and the denizen is a bit better. Uh, that said, I'm really fine with the sprite. It's a good two drop. It trades with a lot of cards. And if I get onto some hands of binding it's a really good early game staller. Uh, here I'll just take some sideboard cards. <coughs> and after the first booster we have uh, a pretty okay setup. Uh, we have a bit of an aggressive side in the, in the early drop creatures, we have some late game creatures, we have some removals. So so far we're on the right track. We need to make up our mind if we want to be controllers or aggressive. Um, and Demir lends itself a whole lot better to aggressive than, than controllers these days. Um, well, that's a surprise here. We have the next booster and we're opening Dusk Mental Seer. Dusk Mental Seer is uh, a really good creature. It's 4-4, that's really big for its 4 mana because it's flying. Um, and it's, uh, it has an ability that deals damage. Uh, the card advantage is, uh, is relevant, of course, but it's symmetrical, so it shouldn't hurt or gain you a lot more than your opponent. Uh, so it's really dependent on whose deck is, has the more expensive spells in, in, in that uh, terms and you can steer yours while your opponent doesn't know you're playing this guy so he isn't accounting for it. Uh, that said, if he didn't have the ability he would be a uh, first pick as well. He is f just a 4 power for the 4 mana, it's really huge, I'm not going to let this go. The alternative in this booster would be to once again first pick a death cult rogue. Uh, as I've shown in the, fir in the first booster I I don't mind doing that but uh, well he's just clearly outclassed here by the contention. So. This here goes in. <coughs> and then here we get uh, another nice stepping stone in our deck, which is Cloud from the Raptor. Um, Cloud from the Raptor is a bit of a basis of the aggressive deck because it's a one drop and it deals a lot of damage. It really gets big, especially if you include your deck creatures like Knight of Obligation and My Night Drake that have um, a really high stat for their mana cost. So, yeah, Cloud from the Raptor definitely will be the pick. Uh, some other things to consider would be the Troll Parasite. Uh, because the extort is still fine in the Demir Aggressive deck. Uh, Devour Flash, of course, if you, we, we want the cheap removal. Um, it's getting a bit worse if we try the Aggressive plan because they do gain life, but usually removing the creature is worth that and you can get that life back in one swing. I'm hoping the Ors of Guildgate will come back to us so we can actually make that White Splash work. And if we can make the White Splash work, then maybe um, the Green Splash would with if we pick the Nimbus Swimmer, but obviously that's not an option here because we already have three colors that are pretty viable on their own. But the Raptor it is. Okay, so in this booster we have um, Thin Rove of Horror, which is another one of the late game uh, powerful Demir cards. I really like Thin Rove of Horror, but we 
should watch out what our deck is doing. Uh, Dusk Mental Seer is powerful, but it's a bit of a liability if we stuck our deck with six and seven mana costed creatures. Um, so I'm not really convinced that it is the right pick here. That said, the alternative would be to either take the Cressis in the hope that we can get green in here, which I'm not really a fan of, or take a five drop instead of six drop in the form of Leyland Phantom or totally lost. So in that respect we're not losing too much by taking the six drop, but the power level of it is insanely higher than the, of the two blue cards. So I'm just taking the horror. It might not make the deck if our curve ends up too high, but that's okay. I'm going to take that risk, it's a really good card. And here we're getting one of the best two drops for the Dimmer deck. Uh, Dusk Mental Guild Mage uh, provides you with late game plan, with an alternative win condition and with a lot of damage. And that for the good package of still being a bear. It's just as good as Gutter Skulk, it has the same stats, it has two relevant abilities stacked on. So that's, uh, that's basically all we want right now. <coughs> and here we got another Metropolis Sprite. Uh, I don't think you can have enough of these, of these little buggers. Uh, they're really good, they do a decent amount of damage, they trade with uh, a lot of cards. So yeah, I, I don't mind taking a third one. There is no alternative in this booster anyway. <coughs> and here we get on to the emptiness. There are a lot of cards that we could play, but none of them I really want to play. Uh, Clearing Anemones is uh, good for the evolved deck because of the 4 toughness for 4 mana. Um, Navspot Commandos is a fine creature for 5 mana, but still it, it's white would be our splash, and I don't really like splashing for Navspot Commandos, it's just not good enough. Uh, we have the Shadow Slice, which deals a lot of damage, but once again, I'm not really sure I want Shadow Slice in the deck. We're getting a lot more aggressive, so that's a plus point. That's also 5 mana, and we already have a lot of late game cards. Um, I'm picking the Gargoyle because it's creature, and creatures are really important at this point. And it's, uh, it also has flying, uh, so it's not completely unplayable. It's not good, I'm not a fan of it, but you know, there are, there are worse things. Um, here we get a Fort Sprite. And that's, that's really okay. We could consider Assault Griffin uh, or Smite as cards to White Splash. But as I'm seeing it, um, we don't have really a lot of options to Splash by. We only have the Knight of Obligation, which in itself is not going to be enough. I'm not going to add uh, a decent card to Splash White. I want a good card if I want to Splash White. Especially since I don't have any fixels yet. I need, I need to go looking for those fixels in the third booster. I need to go look for Pathetic Prism or Ors of, um, Ors of uh, cards to make the Splash work. And I don't really want to commit to that, so I'm not picking an Assault Griffin, even though it's better than slightly better than a Metropolis Sprite, um, because it might just not end up making the deck. There's nothing in this booster that I want. There's Cleaning Animals, which is a sideboard card at best. <coughs> in, in, in this deck, at least. I mean, if you're going Simic, then, then of course the false stats matter, but uh, being a defensive card, it's uh, meh. Uh, here we get Gutter Skulk. As a fine 2-drop, it's okay. I would consider taking last thoughts here. Um, slap it on a sprite and you have... Uh, well, you have Nefidium. That's okay. Uh, but it's uh, it's 4 mana, that's expensive. And it's it's unreliable. Um, I mean, if you slap it on a small creature, then chances are that you're going to lose the creature along the way. So, As I hoped, the, the guild gate uh, came around, so I'm going to take it. Uh, the alternative is taking Executioner's Swing, which is decent removal. But um, once more, it's removal that I'm not opposed against, but not a fan of, and we're not sure that we can even play it without a decent mana base. So we get another tree drop. Uh, we're starting to develop a little bit of a hole in the tree drop, so I don't mind taking armor transport to fill it up a bit. Um, just getting in the last sideboard cards. And after this, uh, the second booster, we have a really decent deck. The curve is a bit skewy, um, but it's not too bad. I mean, we have a lot of two drops. We have good two drops. The downside of the sprite is that um, our three drops will be coming a turn late because you want to spend the blue mana to deal damage on the third turn. But it doesn't matter if you have another two drops. So having a lot of two drops works with sprites, and uh, having a bit of a void on the three drops is okay for sprites. Um, <coughs> That's that the late game is, is getting in shape pretty well. We have the seer, we have the the primordial and the horror. Uh, we don't, we can't afford a lot of of high end cards at this point, but that's okay, we have a lot of things going for the deck. Um, I seem to be pretty good at opening Foil Swamps, but I'm going to ignore it, as I did with the last one. We have here Grizzly Spectacle, which I really like. Um, we have Rabbit Hybridization, which I also like, because a lot of the threats seem to be unblockable in any case. They're flying, they're unblockable, more flying. Um, so giving them a 3-3 ground creature 
uh, it shouldn't hinder our, our attack step. At the very least, uh, or at the very best for him, uh, he can attack us back for three. But, you know, that's uh, not, not really a problem. That said, I still think Grizzly Spectacle is better because our creatures can handle the early game and uh, playing hi rapid hybridization in one of the first turn should only be done if you really need to get rid of uh, a high level threat, something like that's a chance with madcap skills or things like that. Um, because a 3-3 tree -tree just is, is a heavy beater, it'll, it'll go through you probably faster than the creatures you killed in the first four turns. So I'm taking the Spectacle. <coughs> then we have a booster here with not so many interesting cards. Um, there is Spell Rupture, which is a uh, probably a decent card for this deck. We don't have a lot of high power creature, but countering for two is probably good enough to get one of the early game threats removed. And against a tight curve like the Boros deck, even one would be enough. So that's where the sprites come in. Um, the other cards here, we have a Smite, but we're not on the defensive side. We have a lot of creatures that can defend, like the Knight of Obligation. Um, and, and things like Gutter Scope will pretty soon stop being relevant and just go on blocking duty. Um, but that's that's just not good enough. I'm still not convinced about the White Splash, we only have one fixer, we need to look out for other fixers if we really want to do that. And even if we go white and we don't get the fixers, then having a third Demon Guild Gate would mean that our blue and our black are secure, so I'm just taking the Guild Gate over, over the other cards. And here we get another 7 drop, and I also do like the Black Pearl Mortal, I like it more than the blue one. Uh, Intimidate is, um, is a lot better than flying, and the ability is a lot more relevant, you actually get an extra creature. Um, <coughs> everyone will have creatures in their graveyard by that point, uh, we'll have traded, we have removals, so that's nothing. Um, not everyone has instant sorceries in the graveyard, so he can fizzle, he can't. That said, it's 7 mana, uh, we're aggressive, maybe that's approach is better here. We have uh, some cards that can put cards in their graveyard, we have a lot of trading going on. Um, we have 16 creatures, so I'm not really convinced that we need a Sage Row Denizen. Um, so maybe the death approach is just better to stall the opponent. So we'll, we'll take this out. And here we get a very late Gift of Orzava, it's a 4th pick. Um, well, th there, there are 4 players to my left and one of them has about to be white or black. And I guess they took the rare out of it, because I don't know a lot of commons or incomes that you would pick over this card if it was in your colors. Well, um, I say let's not look a gift house horse in the mouth and then just take it out. <coughs> and then here we get um, a booster full of nothing again. There is uh, no card that will make our deck in this booster. There is a True Fire Paladin, which is probably the best card left in the booster. It's very good for Boros deck. Uh, it's a very good racer, it's a very good defender. Uh, we don't mind it all that much with, uh, with the curve and the creatures we have. I think we can deal with it. There's a Foil High Priest of Penance. I don't know if that's worth anything, but I'm taking it out because the alternatives are, uh, are just not good enough. And then here we get something that we really do like in our deck, which is Keymaster Rogue. Uh, it's a really good creature. It um, doesn't have so much as a drawback in, in a deck like this because everything is so cheap. And being 3 power unblockable is really relevant. So this goes in. And here we get another one of those. We also have the option to take Sapphire Drake if you want another late game card. And we have Psychic Strike. Uh, while I don't really like Psychic Strike, especially not an aggressive deck, um, it does provide um, <coughs> a lot of cover for all the early game creatures. Um, that said, our early game creatures are devouring our mana like it's nothing. So it probably will only be good in turn 5 or 6 if we have nothing else to do and I'm not waiting around for that. Sapphire Drake is too expensive, we already have creatures that fulfill that role, so I'm going to take the second key Master Rogue. And this booster is pretty empty, I'm taking out the Horror of the Dim, um, we might board it in against a Simic deck or anything like that, because it's a good, good defender, good blocker, and it's, um, it's not really bothered by removals as much. Um, this pack has nothing against, I'm taking out Fixing. That will probably be the worst blow for the, the opponent's deck. Yeah, I, I could take out something like one of, one of the spells that are still playable, but you know, mana is, is definitely more important, important than, than such a late spell. I'm going to take Spell Rupture here, because I don't mind playing it. it it's a lot better cover than, than the Psychic Strike is, especially since it only costs, to, it costs mana less, it's not bound on black. I'm taking out Dr. Spulpit, which is way too slow for this deck, but it's going to play one boost left. And 
here are other cards. And um, as we have, we now have uh, 28 cards lying here. There, four of them are lands, which means that the deck consists of 24 cards. Uh, I want 17 lands in this deck because there is some late game going on. We need to to curve it out, and we have something that wants a bit more mana. Uh, we have only one white card. That's this knight. We have a guild gate. That's not enough. I'm moving this to the sideboard, and then we get a straight demir deck. Um, it's uh, it's missing something. I'll, I'll admit to that. Um, I would really have liked hands of binding in this deck. Um, there's a little bit of a gap in the tree drop and these two guys really are underwhelming even if they're, they're, they're solid but they're not good or anything. Uh, we we're forced to play Millennial Gargoyle which is never a good sign in my opinion. But on the other hand we have a lot of good cards. We no, Sorry, the screen shifts. I'll just sort this back like this. But we do have like this model here which is really good. We have two great spectacles which is really good. Uh, we have our end game finished. And um, I'm pretty much convinced that this deck can win. Uh, it's, it's not even that hard for something like this. Um, so yeah, so there, there's, there needs to be mana in this. It's got to be pretty even. Uh, we need a lot of blue early on to play sprites, but we do have double black cards in, uh, in the Gift of Vortiva and the Crystal Spectacles. So we have three gates. I'm going to play all three of them. I, I don't think they will be disrupted to our mana base in any case. We only have one card we want to play in turn one, which is Cloud Fin Raptor. Um, and with uh, six 17 creatures like this, uh, he's even fine on turn 4 or 5. I mean, every creature we draw will pump him up a bit, and a 2-3 three flyer, he'll do exactly what we want of him. So, 3 gates, 17 lands, that means it's 7-7 seven, seven on the rest. Uh, they move to the uh, basic lands button around. And here they are. And this is it, this is going to be the deck, and this is what we're going to play the games with. So, I'll, uh, I'll see you in the first match, and let's see if... Uh, if Demir can actually do it for me. Okay, so here we are in the first match. Um, we've lost the die roll, and uh, is it Guildmate or opponent will start? He's saying hello and good luck, and I'll say that back to him. Okay, so this is our starting hand. We have a really nice hand. We have three sprites, and um, we're being a bit vulnerable to homing lighting, but I can live with that. on the draw so there's uh, a lot of things we can draw uh, to make this hand really powerful um, but if we're not playing against a deck that's filled with fucking the rush I think we'll be fine in anyway I mean the sprites really can pump up some tempo and since we have three we can spend one or two to block okay so Din Rover Horror is giving us a bit of a late game perspective He's playing uh, Demon as well, it seems, but he doesn't have anything to do in turn 1 and 2, so our Metropolis Sprite is taking the lead on the board. <coughs> and he used the Fire Flash, that's okay. We have enough sprites to last that. He used Sage Row Denizen. I'm not particularly threatened by that card. Just used another sprite. And Civic Manipulator. Well, that's a good card. Now we need to be careful with how we're playing this. Um, we really could use one of the Crystal Spectacles. I'm uh, not going to pump this up. I want to play the other sprite as well. And I need to make sure that his Manipulator can steal one of our sprites. So I need to keep it off of. Uh, we need to keep on blue mana open to make sure that uh, he can steal a sprite for just one. I want to make sure that he uses two counters. I'm not really concerned about his damage raise on the Sage Road Denizen. Uh, although the Bell Spit Spy is going to be a bitch. <coughs> okay, so we lost our fourth sprite in the swamp. That's okay. we get the uh, armor transport. Um, we could play it and then he can steal it. Uh, I don't think it will become much of a problem. Uh, the worth of Devour Flash is definitely going down by this point. So we might play that first unless he steals creature of ours and just sacrifices that. 
I don't think he's going to do a whole lot of good. He has two, two, three guys, and the same way I played on my B2-3 in, in the turn as well. So I'm, I'm just saving it using the Bower Flash on my turn and on, on his turn. <coughs> Let's see what happens. First, play the devour flash on him. And there goes the Sage for Denison. Now, we can take a bit of a gamble here. Uh, we can try and exhaust this uh, Simic Manipulator by double blocking the Bellaswitch Pi with two sprites. He will then probably, uh, if, if he isn't a good player, he will use it on one of our sprites and think he has a good deal. We'll pop that sprite and he'll lose his Pi for one of our sprites. If he is a good player, then he doesn't do that, and then we lose probably both sprites for the Bellastrate Spy. He is left with the single manipulator and two cards in hand, and we have three cards in hand, of which two are pretty good late game cards, so I think this is a gamble we can take. If he messes this up, we'll be in really good shape. If he doesn't mess this up, um, we'll still be in really good shape, so that's okay. Now they're all waiting on him. He's doing nothing. Well then, I'll do it for him. <coughs> and the best move for him right now is to steal the other sprite. Uh, he's going to steal this one. And uh, that's really good as well, but at least I can kill it. Um, no, yeah, obviously I didn't think this through. So, as it is, uh, he'll gain control of my sprite. That's not a good thing. And then I'll just lose both sprites in the process. Okay, so he apparently I didn't think this true enough and he tricked me. That said, this manipulator is empty. Uh, we have the Dinner of a Horror still and he's not stealing that. So that's okay. Let's see what he has. He has a sprite. Sure. So I'm going to use the horror. And I'll send this manipulator back. Uh, I think the Bellasphate Spy would be uh, as viable a target as the manipulator. Um, except that he's not going to win the air race anyway. So maybe he, if he held on to a good card, he might discard the manipulator and uh, be done with it. At least now he'll need an extra turn to steal our mind side trick, which is doing all the blocking. Oh, that's a good card. Uh, he has a Devour Flesh, so we'll get a little bit of value out of it. But its main asset right now is having 5 power and uh, just being the biggest player on the board that he can steal. And now it's waiting for him to draw 2 creatures so he can steal Mind's Eye Drake. Or oh, we get Dustman to see we already drew all of our late game, so this is really going to work in our favor even if we are a bit behind on life. He might trade his both, both creatures for the draw of a horror, but with the late game we're holding that's not, not, not a problem at all. So now he gets uh, he gets more cards with the Dusk Metal Seer. Um, that means he will get more creatures eventually. But that's uh, not really a big deal. Okay, so we get a revealed zone. I'll, I'll, have to, uh, I'll have to get it out. I revealed the island, obviously, it's in our hand. And he revealed the Devour Flesh, uh, which is fine. It'll be a lot of life for our Mindset Drake. We get uh, more fixed to choose from for our Primordial in a moment. So I'll just attack him with these. <coughs> he has to do power flash. Okay, I'll sacrifice the Drake. It's the easy start for him to steal. It gains me five life. It mills in for five more cards, so one more will do more. The Psychic Strike, uh, call it Nightwing, Risky Spectacle. He has a lot of good cards in his deck. He has another Devour Flash. Um, which is okay, I'll just uh, straight in the horror. It has done its job. And now he probably wants to trade those for our Dusk Mantis here. We, we could have countered at any point, by the way, with the Spell Rupture, but I don't think that's really worth it. I mean, we're getting good trade after good trade on this, so... Uh, let's first read how this works. Uh, if uh, you do Gravehead, Exile it instead. Um, so I think this works with Cypher, so Call of the Nightwing looks to be like 
a good choice, except that he can then steal stuff with the manipulator, so maybe I just should pick the Grizzly Spectacle and take guard off. Yeah, I'll just, just target Grizzly Spectacle, take care of this. I was about to cast it, well, let's cast it then. There it goes. And now he has two cards in hand, of which we know none. And this incursion specialist, that's okay. We have a lot of life from the two uh, Devour Flashes that he had. Uh, we now have the Spell Rupture, which is um, not a hard counter, but it's getting close. And he's on a two turn clock with our Primordial. So I'll add the ar armor transport so that he can attack without accidentally dying to it. The only thing I'm willing to counter Spell Rupture at this point is a removal spell from his side. Uh, Mort Strider is not that removal spell, so I'm not countering it. Okay, I'll take that one damage. Send the both of them in. I'm not afraid of Mort Strider. And if he doesn't draw a really cheap removal right now, then it's, uh, this game is over. <coughs> he has the Mort Strider. He'll deal one damage. I think this is just going through the motions for him. Keymaster Rogue. It's, it's a good follow up if he has something, but he doesn't have anything. Okay, so this first game is, is ours. Um, looking at his deck, he really has a, uh, a lot of good cards. He has three Devour Flashes, he has a uh, Crushy Spectacle, a uh, Cold Nightwing is in there, and of course a Manipulator. And all of his creatures are pretty okay. I mean, this, uh, these last two are a bit of a couple of deaths, but still. Um, and especially the manipulator worries me because we have a lot of low power threats like Metropolis Sprites and uh, it really is a tricky card. Uh, especially since I tricked myself with it. But th that hopefully won't happen again in the next game. I think we need to win this on on, on our big cards, on our Primordial, on our Tuscumentus here. Uh, those are the cards that are going to make a difference in this match. So do we have anything we want to board in? Well, if we're headed for the late game, we might consider boarding in the Depth Fulpit and Knight of Obligation. But he hasn't shown a lot of heavy hitters, so I don't think the Depth Fulpit will be good. And most of his creatures show that they are flying, so the Knight won't be able to block a lot of those. So we'll probably be boarding him in for um, for his extra purposes, but uh, that's a color too much. Horror of the Dim is something that I do like to board in against. This is Hexproof, is relevant. Uh, it won't help against the Power Flesh, but um, it does help against the Super Manipulator, against a lot of the... <coughs> Sorry, uh, against the Grizzly Spectacle and uh, stuff like that. And I think this might be uh, be better than um, I think something like the Armor Transport. I mean, we saw he had a lot of three toughness creatures. Uh, he has a Mortis Strider, and uh, those just bother the transport while the horror still has, has some gain against those. <coughs> um, we might board in even the Razor Tip Whip, but I think we're both too aggressive for that. Um, if I see a lot of stalling cards in the next game, then yeah, I'll, I'll board in that whip and see if I can win it that way. <coughs> okay, so uh, we're keeping this hand. We have a 2-drop, 3-drop, 4-drop. This is exactly what we want against him. And there's the land that can make it happen. Uh, th these two creatures are probably just here to deal uh, a few damage to him. Um, and then get eaten up by Devour, uh, by Devour and Green. Uh, we can play the Cloudfin Raptor right now, and then next turn make sure it levels up, and I think that's a really good idea. Um, just so that we can get a reliable Raptor. If we don't play it now, then it will be smaller, and he has shown that he has a lot of, of removal spells, so we want to get this up as, as big as possible. Uh, as soon as possible, so it will be a trap worth removing for him. So it, it'll use the Psychic Strike. Okay, we're losing nothing special, except our, our turn, but he lost his, so no big deal there. And there's Battle Straight Spy. That would have completely shut down the Metropolis Sprite, so I don't really mind not having played that on turn 2. And um, <coughs> now we have the interesting problem, we can play the Dismantle Seer, but he probably will have a removal. If it is Devour Flesh, we always have the Raptor. Uh, if it is Respectable, we'll lose this, then we still have Keymaster Rogue to, ha to have some game with, so... And not a total loss, but we can play it safer with the Metropolis Sprite and uh, see if the board owns up to it. You could even play the Keymaster Rogue um, and just see if that works out. But that's particularly vulnerable to Devour Flesh, losing the Keymaster Rogue in the process. So I'm not very fond of that. Um, I'll just play the Dismantle Seer and see if it catches the removal. If it doesn't, it will 
probably go win us the game right there. If it does catch removal, then the key master will have to do that job, but at least we still have that alternative. <coughs> Okay, so it seems he doesn't have the removal. And he's... Yeah, of course he can attack because we have the, the bigger flyer. Now we're getting ready with the revealed zone so again. Oh, I'm taking heavy hit from the horror. That's okay, he's taking three from the stage row Denizen. Um, so what we want is... Uh, we need really aggressive spectacle, which is a good card to draw. We want to attack this. Uh, I don't think there's a trick that can uh, help the Dossus by win this battle for him. So we just attack. Uh, I don't mind taking damage from one of these two, but I would like to prevent damage from one of these two if it's possible. So I need to play at least a creature that will make the raptor grow or be able to block the death cult rogue. And um, basically all four of them are the option here. They can all do one of those. He knows I have the horror. Um, and the horror can actually uh, attack next turn. Uh, the Metropolis Sprite probably won't be able to. The Key Master Rogue will summon the Cloudfin Raptor. Uh, and stuff like that, so I think the horror might be the best play. It's also the expensi most expensive card in our hand, uh, which means that we'll have to uh, we'll, we'll, uh, be able to do more things next time if we draw a land that comes to play untapped. Um, it does uh, also represent the biggest creature, but the key master can also make the platform raptor fly, uh, grow, so not a big problem there. Let me click this one out, he knows we have it. Can block hit uh, this, this guy, that's okay, I go to 13. <coughs> We're not playing any Dracos or anything like that, so. Or well out of Lethal Rage. Maybe he drew his Grisly Spectacle as well, take care of the Dismantles here. No, he has King Master Oak. And that's something that I really want to Grisly Spectacle because that can clock us down way too fast. And the Cursion Specialist. There we go, I'm taking 7 which is the worst case scenario for us right now. We did get the untapped land but that we asked for. Uh, there's nothing in this graveyard right now, so that's a bit of a bummer. What we need to do, we need to spectacle the Ski Master Rogue. Uh, we know he has um, the Death Cult Rogue, so his uh, Curse Specialist will probably be unblockable this, uh, his next turn. So if he has Ski Master Rogue in the removal, then he just takes care of this guy, attacks with everything, the remove one will still be in in pretty okay shape. So what we're going to do, we're going to attack with these two guys. Um, <coughs> the Dusk Metal Seer can die to this attack. The Horror might, but it means that one of his unblockable guys will die, and that's something I'm pretty okay with. Um, and uh, then here's the hoping that he doesn't have it all. So if he has to play two spells, he'll probably be tapped out. We can play the Great Spectacle then, and then we just need to miss with our Dusk Metal Seer. Uh, we could play the Key Master Rogue or someone just want to see but then we're just dead on the board. If he does have two spells, and we already know one of those, so I'm just going to follow for this. If he can't make the Specialist unblockable, uh, we'll just try the Key Master Rogue and see where it goes. But he's going to tap out. He has two Sage Road Denizens, that's okay. And we lose the Swamp and the Key Master Rogue. Um, he'll declare us attackers, which will be these two guys. We'll take out the guy that we can never block. And there goes his Chris Spectacles, or from Mordor, something to do now. And here's hoping to something cheap on top. And that's really good what's going to decide this game, because our backspin will be uh, for damage. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be decided by the Disc Mental Seer. We have Metropolis Sprite, we go to 1, he has Call of Nightwing, he goes to 2. And that basically seals the deal. So we can just attack for the win. Uh, there is no spell for one black mana that will still save him right now. You could play the Dinner Rover Horror and send the Bell Shed Spire back to make sure that one of our creatures comes through. Um, but I think that's, uh, that's a moot point uh, right now. I'm just sending everything in and this game is over. You start the chat. Good game. Yeah, it, I'll admit, uh, this was lucky one. Okay, so, um, I'll admit I needed a bit of luck at the end, but then again, I hit 5 and 7 with my Dusk Mantle Seer, so I took 12 damage already. 
and I think it evens pretty much out that I didn't die to it at the end. Um, but yeah, it was it was an exciting game. I really like these games. Uh, the Demon Mirror is interesting because they're just um, a lot of decks, a lot of tricks, and a lot of racing elements, and it's all about who can can grasp the control of the other players. And you need to remove spells for that. Crazy Spectacles showed that having the removal at the right time is absolutely crucial. If you had destroyed the Dusk Metals here, I probably wouldn't have won this game. Um, so yeah, that's that's how it goes. Um, a little note about Dimir. Uh, a lot of people have heard me say that Dimir is not a good deck. Um, which I fully still believe in. Dimir is not a good deck. Uh, in which I mean that the Dimir plan of uh, milling an opponent to death by, by removing guards from his library um, is not a good strategy, it's not viable. Dimir has a lot less playables than all the other guilds and I still stand by that point. And the only way that you can make a blue-black deck work is like um, our opponent did, like we did, by having a game with a lot of tempo, by having the good Dimir cards like the Dusk Mantle, uh, Seer, uh, which is mythic so you won't always get that, but also the Dinarova Horror, uh, the Metropolis Sprites, which uh, basically are Simic cards in my opinion. Um, and, and you have the Death Cult Rogue, so you have the Sage Rose Denizens, and uh, you need those cards to make it work. Because they're the good creatures, they're the nice curve, and they're the things that are going to help you through. You can either go extort with your side, maybe you can get some evolved creatures on the Simic side, or maybe you can just use the good Demir cards if you can get those. But um, as soon as Demir becomes a popular deck and is overdrafted, then its value just goes down because there aren't enough cards to go around the deck to support uh, so many. Uh, so many Demir decks. Uh, I think that if we face off another Demir deck, we had a very lopsided draft with a lot of Demir uh, saturated boosters. Because we saw his cards, they were good. We saw my cards, they are good. And that's basically all the good Demir cards that you can have in those colors. Um, they're, 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 they're just <laughs> it's just there isn't a limit to how many blue and black cards are in a draft. And, and I think we already kept it out in this first match. Um, so I'll see you all in the second match, and we'll see how the Demir deck does, this w does with that. Um, and I think it'll be against one of the Boros or the Gruel decks, because we saw a lot of those cards coming by, and that'll probably be the other decks in the draft. So see you in a moment. Okay, here we are with our second match. Um, our opponent is 420 Fish, and he played the last game almost till time, uh, the last match. So I'm thinking he has a slow deck, he might have the Orsov deck. Um, and be playing an Orsov mi Mirror, those really can go uh, a, long, uh, a long time. Um, so uh, we have a bit of a slower hand here. We have, uh, last as we need, we have to just a guild match, Slate Screen Ruffian, so we have a 2 drop here, drop, but they're not really impressive in the attacking department. Um, I'm really counting on this deck to not be the super fast Boros deck, so I will keep this hand and see where this brings us. <coughs> so he won the die roll, he gets, uh, he gets to play first. Uh, and um, yeah, that's, uh, what this hand, need, uh, this hand needs uh, is time, mostly. Uh, I'm really counting on this deck to be a bit slower. Uh, so that my Dusplantal Guildmage can shine. Uh, if he removes it, then I'm they really, need, really need to go draw and do s some, some spells that actually do something. Slate Street Ruffian is a really good guy. Uh, sure, he might get two or four damage in, but before long he'll just run into something. And if he's putting pressure back, he's not really a good blocker. Well, here we get Armored Transport. At least that can save the attack. But if it is the Ors of deck, um, then Armored Transport will probably run into a lot of walls. Uh, he's showing off a Burst Guild Gate and a Grill Guild Gate. And um, that's a bit awkward. He might be playing a lot of colors in his deck, or he might just be playing very slowly with an aggressive deck. Uh, as we've already seen, he's played two gates and he's already spent a minute of his time. Uh, maybe he's recording just like me, because I'm taking a lot of time as well. Um, he hasn't done anything yet. I'm going to play the Sprite over the Guild Mage. Um, next turn, if he does play uh, a blocker for the Guild Mage, we couldn't do any damage. And now he can just attack with the Sprite, deal him one damage to play the Ruffian, or deal him two damage to play the Guild Mage. Or instead of the Ruffian play the Armored Transport, that is a bit moot. Um, yes, Scar Guild Mage in the Plains. So he's probably a Naya deck, and a slower Naya deck with big creatures. We have some removals that will help with that. Uh, I'll just play out Swamp. 
So now we can attack for one, or we can attack for two and play the guild match. Uh, I don't think that either one of these two creatures will be a very good attacker next turn. So I'll just play the Discmantle Guild Mage and one extra damage this turn. It seems like uh, just as much valid as all the other plays. Um, <coughs> I don't think we'll be doing a whole lot of heavy attacking with the ground creatures this match. Uh, the Metropolis Sprite will probably be dealing uh, a good deal of damage against him. And I think the Key Master Rogue will as well be a very good, uh, very good attacker. And the other guys are just here to go lay in front Surta Swines and stuff like that. That's what I'm expecting. <coughs> also, I think have already having access to Primordial is a really good thing. Uh, at least when we draw three lands, we have something to do with it. And a big flyer is really good against the Maya deck because they don't have a lot of answers. Now, here's the deal that I'm not saying no to. Um, of course, if, if this is a trait, that's fine. His car guild mage is way better than my dusk mental guild mage is. And if he has to use a trick on this, he probably has a blood rush creature. In the very worst case, I'm trading with skin brand goblin, which is about an, uh, an okay trade, but it costs him a mana, so he's losing tempo. Now he's using martial glory, which I'm very fine with. Martial glory for dusk mental guild mage is a good deal, and he lost all of his tempo this turn, so he couldn't play any of the power guards. He has spire tracer. I'm not really concerned about Spire Tracer, so no big deal there. Now we'll just get in with Sprite again. We can make him go for two. <coughs> and then we'll play the Armor Transport. He hasn't uh, played any creature that can withstand it right now, so if he attacks again, we'll just block with Transport against the Gold Mate. It's okay. Uh, if he does play a, play a big creature, you can always uh, keep the Transport back on, on blocking duty. <coughs> The Metropolis Sprite will be, uh, will be doing a lot of the work anyway. So we have the Spell Rupture, with which we can counter one of the big guys. Uh, and I really am expecting the big guys in a deck like that. So I think that in a turn or two I will want to be keeping that mana up. And maybe just attack for two with the Sprite and do nothing in that turn, but it kind of depends on what we draw. Okay, so he's probably run, ran out of tricks, so the guild mage isn't coming, or maybe it, it isn't worth the tempo. Just fire tracer for one. Okay, that's fine. And he'll have an after combat creature. And it's probably built raiders. It's a, it's a good creature as well. Um, I'm gonna bet that he doesn't want to trade this. And we got a free 2 damage with the armor transport. <coughs> and I'll play this the the ruffian. Uh, the, the ruffian is here purely for blocking purposes. I want to block as soon as possible because the guild mage can give the raiders trample. So we don't have a whole lot of time, and I want to block as soon as possible for the for those raiders. And the ruffian is is perfect for this. You can just do that while the sprite will go on. Um, I would really be comfortable drawing a grisly spectacle right now just to get rid of the rebel belt raiders because they can get really big really fast. And uh, next turn we can just play out the sprite and have Spell Rupture Mana open for one of his power spells. But that said, I think that his board is really powerful as well. If he's going to use Scar Guild Mage to make 4-4 four, four creatures out of his lands, and then starts attacking, um, he'll be dealing a lot of damage as well. So <coughs> and there he goes. The place becomes a creature. If he attacks with everything, I'm trading off Scar Guild Mage because that gives me a lot more time than he otherwise would have had. If he just attacks with the two big guys in Spire Tracer, I'll block the Royal Belt Raiders and save myself a lot of damage. Um, on the other hand, we are getting in a free hit with the Arm Transport again because Scar Guild Mage definitely isn't blocking that. <coughs> okay, so here it goes. I'll take 5, we'll go to 14. We're still a long way from being completely dead, so... No problem there. I would love to draw an Untap Land or a Removal Spell at this point. Although Devour Flesh isn't the best Removal Spell to draw, and Death's Approach doesn't do anything for us right now. So it would have been... it would have to be aggressive spectacle. And we get Cloudfit Raptor. That's uh, not exactly what I was looking for. But it's... Uh, it's okay. It's a blocker. It presents us with another new plan, instead of keeping Spell Rupture Mana open, we now can just play the Raptor in the Metropolis fight and have two more blockers or maybe air attackers. 
and there's uh, there's no doubt about it this is going down to be a race we need two more turns and we need to make sure that he needs two more turns as well <coughs> At least we have two creatures that can block Spire Tracer, so that will be its last attack step. And he does seem to be a bit screwed on his mana, being stuck on four lands, so he can't activate a 4 4 guy and give everything trample. <coughs> so those are advantages for us. And uh, we, we are in good shape on the board, I mean. Um, if we draw something like a scope, we have already lethal here, so he needs to think about what he's attacking with, and he might lose his card guildmates to armor transport if he isn't careful. <coughs> also, there is always the possibility that I would go land shadow slice, which would be really good, and I don't think he can do anything about that right now, but if he can, he probably will. He probably will have to. Once more, he's giving me a, a free block step on the Royal Belt Raiders. The Spire Tracer is not even attacking. <coughs> Maybe the Spire Tracer will want to block the armor transport. It's, it's an option, for sure. Depending on his attackers, you can think of our blocks. Um, one of my one of our creatures is going to block the Rebel Belt Raiders for sure. Um, which one it is is kind of tricky. We need to do a head count for that in a moment. The other one might be blocking the planes, or he might even give us a Scar Guildmate for free. Um, but if he does that, we'll take 13 damage from the rest, and that's not a comfortable position I want to be in. So that's probably going going in and coming and doing damage. So if you just block one, uh, probably with the Cloudfin Raptor. Uh, let's see, then we take six, we go to eight, and next turn we'll have Metropolis Sprite to block the Royal Belt Raiders. If we left 12 power, the Trample will be dead, so that's not a good option. Um, other options are blocking both the Royal Belt Raiders and the planes, taking two, going to 12. And uh, re-attacking with the armor transport and the Metropolis Sprite, dealing 4, he'll go to 4, and will be dead on the backswing for a trampling rubber belt of raiders. Uh, depending on what we draw, if we have to play Keymaster Rogue, then we won't have enough. Um, so this is going to be really dependent on our draw. And the best thing we can draw is the Grizzly Spectacle, in that case we can't lose. Um, whatever we do, uh, except leave everything uh, uh, to deal damage to us. Um, but if we take out the Guild Mage, it will mean we'll take 13 damage and go to 1, but he only has 2 attackers left. And we lose only 1 creature in the process, so it is a gamble, but then we're not as draw dependent. Then we might actually be able to, to make it with what we have in hand. Spell Rupture will come in handy. Uh, we need to be a little bit careful with our attackers, but um, that's not really a problem if Armored Transport can attack anyway, because if Spire Pressure blocks then we need one less blocker. Um, so, that that's something I would consider at this point. Yeah, if he has something like a Boris Charm, we're dead anyway. I mean, there's nothing we can do to prevent that. So, the point, it, it really goes out to what, what are we going to draw. If you draw the removal, we're okay. Are there a lot of other draws that we can draw to be okay? And no, there are not. There are actually a lot of other draws that won't do anything for us. Um, a land won't help us here. Uh, the other key master rope won't help us here. The, all the spells we can cast won't help us here. Even the Devour Flesh is horribly bad if we just jump right now. So I think we need to take this gamble, take the 13 damage and go to 1. Uh, block the guild mage so that it dies, so leaving him with Spire Tracer and Rubble Belt Raiders. If he has an expensive spell, we can spell rupture it. We can block the Rubble Belt Raiders and Spire Tracer with ease with the three flying creatures that we have, of which one we lose. And um, then just hope that we can pull through with our air attackers. And I think that's the best plan. The best thing we can draw at this point is something we can cast alongside spell rupture, so that would be Cuttle Skulk or another Metropolis Sprite. Uh, and I think that's that's the way to go. That's the only way to win this game. 
So here it goes. Of course, if we still draw a grizzly spectacle, um, we can still use that to win this game. I mean, killing Robo World Raider is <laughs> not a bad deal at all. And um, we still are going to need a few turns to attack, so we need a draw anyway in the next three turns. We need another blocker in the next three turns and we'll die. But we have we have blockers for that. We have Keymaster Rope, we can buy a lot of time. And I think even if we do land, 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 we can still figure this out. Um, so yeah, it's just he's, he's deciding on whether he wants to wrap for the Metropolis Sprite to die. I think having the Raptor die is the right choice. It'll never get any bigger than uh, than the sprite will never get any bigger than the Raptor anyway. Okay, so we're at one. And here we are. And we'd rather got a skulk. This is like um, the most acceptable scenario we could have. We can attack him for a couple of damage, three to be exact. We have spell rupture open, but got a skulk to block. So let's go for this. <coughs> if we we had still at the raptor, we actually deal one damage more. Would have been even better. Um, and here they go. You could consider just attacking with the two sprites, deal one damage less, but be immune for homing lightning. But that would just lose us the game. So, if he has a removal spell that we uh, can't counter, we'll lose anyway. And homing lightning we can counter, so that would be an ideal play for us. Also, this will leave him dead next turn, uh, considering it that he can play only one spell in his turn, and we can counter that spell, then we can just do our blocks and be done with it. And we can just swing back with the Tomb of the Sprites and the Armor Transport and, and have to win right there. That's a Glaring Spotlight. And Glaring Spotlight says, Sacrifice that creature to target Hexproof and left turn are unblockable, and unblockable is something that I don't want them to be. So I'll make him two mana more for, for this. If he... Well, this is, this is the last thing we're going to do. We're either going to win it on this or we're going to lose it on this, and that's it. But at least we've got the Glare Spotlight for as much as we can. He's not being able to pay those three mana to sacrifice it, so even if he keeps with Spell Rupture, it's, uh, it's not good enough. It, it, he probably will let it be countered and cast something else. And that would still bring us in a little bit of a shaky spot because we won't be able to kill him next turn if he has a block of armor transport. But if he doesn't have any of that and he really is out of options except for the killing spotlight, then this game is over. And um, well, he has the Naya deck, and as I predicted, he really is playing slow. Um, as I often mentioned, I play a bit slower when I'm talking to you guys, but um, he used twice as much time as, as I did already and um, I'm actually talking to you, thinking uh, out loud and, and just generally showing stuff. Well, he's just wasting his time probably. <coughs> so here are the attackers. There's of course the other option that he might have a, a blood rush creature or something like that to pump his fire trace to make his five Metropolis sprite. That would be uh, a problem for the sprite, but not uh, so much a problem for us as we can still attack with armor transport and play Kimos through and still have enough blockers but we're, we're not in, in a winning shape anymore at that point. So I'm just hoping this is a love attack to see if I can screw up take good one damage. <coughs> because if it's not we're once again draw dependent but we're we already were this entire match so yeah, a slot armor. Okay, that's a shame. Then we need to go and draw something good. And he also has True Fire Paladin. Uh, this complicates things. Uh, at least we have a Dutch approach that does something right now. Uh, he has two creatures in the Grave Head so I can kill whatever creature is on there. But that approach is not going to cut it. Uh, next turn we'll lose our Armor Transport to his Oral Build Raiders. Our Metropolis Sprite will be able to block Spire Tracer. But um, <coughs> that's not a good scenario to be in. We'll, we'll have to play this or die. So there's no choice there. <coughs> okay, 
Okay, so now we're losing the armor transport to the rubber belt raiders. Uh, he probably won't attack its pirate tracer because Metropolis Sprite will just block it and then he'll lose it. But I'm uh, I'm not really concerned about it. We might lose this game, but he's using a lot of time in this game, and um, I can see why the previous match went on so long. And I think if he can stall out a few more turns, he might actually be playing the clock instead of playing his deck. So that's uh, not not uh, entirely the way that you should play this game. But you know, uh, a win is a win. So let's just see how long it takes him to actually kill us. Here is Cinder Elemental. Well, that's a sure kill for us. So, um, well, we have the Power Flash that won't help us. But let's see how he handles the situation. I mean, he has a certain win. He has three attackers. He has Cinder Elemental. So there's actually no way that we could still win this. Um, but let's see what he does. Does he blow the Cinder Elemental at us? Does he just attack? Does he attack with Cinder Elemental, perhaps? Uh, I, w I want to know his response. <coughs> Okay, so he's attacking with those two. <coughs> That's okay, that, that actually gives us an extra out if I want to reveal the power flash to him. I can just block this. And now I could the power flash ourselves take gain to life to one damage. We die bits in elemental, so I'm not going to show him the card. But um, <coughs> if he didn't have that it would have bought us another turn. Okay, so against his deck, uh, there's not a lot you can board in because you don't have a lot of sideboard. Things like clinging animals, I don't think it's good enough. Uh, we're trying to be the aggro deck here, so uh, no deal there. And it, it wouldn't stop any of his big guys anyway. He really won this on his rubber belt raiders. He would have needed one of our busy spectacles to deal with it. Um, so yeah, I'm just leaving the deck as it is. I'm going to game save. Check the other match or wait in front of the sideboard. The other match uh, is 1 0. Okay, so yes, we want to play first. And what a horrible hand we have. Uh, I'll ship this right away. This is um, not a whole lot better. Uh, we don't have any pressure at all. We have two dead cards in the 7 mana Primordial and the 2 mana Spell Rapture. And the only reason I'm keeping this hand is because we have two colors of our mana so we can play all of our two drafts. Uh, and we have the Dusk Metal Seer, which is uh, one of the best cards in the deck and probably what we need to, to win this match, if we can still win it. Um, he's starting off with Legion Loyalist. I'm not really impressed by Legion Loyalist, but sure, it's, it's a creature. It's not bad. It's going to deal a few damage. Um, we're going to need to draw lands now. The best draw we can have is land land, even though it means taking a couple of damage from his creatures. And we draw a clear Master Oak, so we're stuck on this. We're giving him a free turn, a free turn to develop. Um, even with his awkward mana base, uh, I don't think he'll be taking a lot of advantage from it, but you know, an extra turn is an extra turn. So that's really bad. Yeah, Spire Tracer, which does nothing for us, we draw a gift of Forest of <coughs> We'll just slowly be dying to his two one power creatures. I don't think land land is going to be good enough right now. We just lost so much tempo. Here's another card we can't cast. And uh, I'll discard the primordial because I'm not casting that anytime soon. Yes, Ordrin Veteran. That's going to deal us a lot of damage next turn, and we can't do anything about it. We still can't cast any of our spells. Uh, that land was way too late, and now we're going to lose to the veteran. It's, uh, it's eight, da eight damage right there. This is kind of legionnaire to make it ten damage, we'll go to three. Um, I don't think there's a card in our deck that can save us at this point.
No, it's Devour Flesh that doesn't do anything, so we just lost this match. Uh, and there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, the first game was close, it was an interesting game. Uh, <coughs> we were behind that game, and then we lost it because we were, we were one step behind and we lost the race. The second game we couldn't do anything about it, I wouldn't have mulliganed that second hand. Um, I knew it did nothing, but we had to gamble. If we go to 5, we might end up with an awkward hand that doesn't have any land stall. Um, or maybe still have the primordial that we will never be able to cast. So having two lands, having a uh, future option in, in this middle sphere, that was good enough. Uh, we had to take that gamble and we lost it, so too bad. Uh, that was the draft, and um, that was the Demir deck, so I hope you enjoyed this draft, and I'll see you all next week.